Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi, folks. Welcome back. This is a, a clip from Dan Bongino on Fox with the co-founder of Black Lives Matter in New York City. And on your left there, you see Mayor-elect Adams. Now, made the news a couple of days ago, the Black Lives Matter co-founder sat down with future mayor, and he wanted to put the crime unit back, that de Blasio caved, capitulated to this fringe group, and they are, let's tell the truth, and gave them more power than they really should have, more clout. And it's a really fascinating exchange between Dan and the Black Lives Matter leader. And uh, let's just, uh, let's watch. The mayor of New York City, after focusing on fighting crime and law and order, was a big plank in his campaign. He committed as part of his campaign platform to bring back plainclothes police officers, something I know a little bit about. Here's how Hawk Newsom, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York, responded. If they think that they're going to go back to the old ways of policing, then we're going to take to the streets again. There will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. Joining me now for the rebuttal is the man in that clip, Greater New York City Black Lives Matter chapter co-founder, Hawk Newsom. Hawk, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. And thank you, he says later, for giving me this opportunity. And this conversation goes downhill real quick. Let's listen. Sure. So, Hawk, Mayor-elect Adams responded to what you said. I want to play this clip and get your reaction. Um, Check this out. New Yorkers are not going to live in fear, and we're not going to be intimidated by anyone. This city is not going to be a city of riots. It's not going to be a city of burning. If fringe elements want to hurl uh, rhetoric like that, that's silly to New Yorkers. Hawk, your, your thoughts and your response to Mayor-elect Eric Adams. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity. What we have here is some activists, uh, he he wants to call us fringe, but let's face the facts. We opened our own school in the Bronx. We fed 25,000 people last year. Uh, We provide Christmas gifts. We even paid funeral expenses. We do a lot of great work in the city of New York, so much so that last year he called me personally and asked me for a political endorsement for it. Now, here's the deal. Eight million odd people in the New York City metro area. He fed 25,000. Is that commendable? It could have been 3,000 people that he fed eight, nine times. Who knows? Is that commendable? Yeah. But it's like saying that I took a bucket out of a swimming pool full of water, and now I want credit for it. (laughs) Between a rock and a hard place. Of course Adams called him for his endorsement. Even, Even Democrats know that they don't want these people's support. They don't really don't want their endorsement. What they want is is that organization not working against them. That's what they want, and that's the way the game is played. So use your clout as a co-founder of BLM in New York. By the way, BLM Nationwide is taking in billions of dollars with a B. It's interesting. I'd love to see a forensic audit and where the money went because we have two or three Black Lives Matter National Board founders now with multi-million dollar homes, but I digress. And it's just amazing to me, like, he's this, he's this Jesus that's coming in. The fact of the matter is, it's Democrats, progressive leftists that have turned these school districts into hell holes. We have 60% dropout rate in high school. Will they turn to Republicans? Hell no. Black people don't do that. And he pretends to represent black people in New York. How insulting. It's an mayoral campaign. But this isn't about me and Eric Adams. This is about black New York. We went into his office with issues. 
and we presented these issues in a very intelligent and articulable way. And where we hit an impasse was when we said, hey, we want to hold you accountable. He said, don't hold me accountable. I'm holding you accountable. So here you have this politician who everybody voted for, who ran on a campaign saying, hold me accountable. And now he doesn't want to be held accountable. I just I just really don't get it right now. He's he's in the media and there's this circus. That's not who I am. I'm not a politician. No, he says, that's not who I am. I'm not a politician. But you're going to see later he will not answer a direct question. He will not do it. And it's an important question. And I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to, you know, ruin the video. I, I was surprised, actually, that he answered the way he did. And he just talks nonsensical. Of course, Dan, you know, Bongino, he's a no-nonsense guy. He's not going to put up with this rhetoric crap. Talk, 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 talk. How, how does, I don't understand how, how rioting, though, and, and implying that there's going to be bloodshed will you know, give those places more schools and better schools and, and how it'll fix the problem. I mean, you clearly said that. I, I heard you. Why, why would you say something like that? Um, let's call it foreshadowing. Um, the unit that he wants to bring back, the style of policing that, that he has promised in New York is responsible for the death of Eric Garner and all the protests that follow, Sean Bell, who was murdered on his wedding night, and all the pro protests that follow, and Amadou Diallo. And now, watch now as he's talking. Dan has given him plenty of time to talk. Plenty of time to talk. Yeah, those are bad things that happen. But they're anecdotal in a way. The fact of the matter is, when you're dealing with millions and millions of interactions, and you're dealing with human beings, bad things are going to happen sometimes. Yeah, it sucks. But not every single person that's killed by a police officer is a rogue cop. And to make it even worse, morons like this guy that have called for defunding the police have chased all the good cops from these major cities. So now what's left is the road cops and rookies, which is going to make the chances for a very bad outcome 10 times worse. These guys are morons. Immigrant who was shot 41 times by the same unit for reaching for his wallet. Dan, I was a kid who was home from college driving through the Bronx, a good kid who was snatched out of his car and searched frequently That's to reimagine police. We did, Hawk, we tried this. I mean, I was a cop in a very busy precinct in East New York, Brooklyn. And I can tell you, for every incident you cite, there's 50 to 100 to 1,000 other incidents where plainclothes police officers are pulling some drug dealer off the street who was slinging crack and had a gun on him who wanted to kill an innocent victim. Why do you leave all that out? I mean, yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. Why do you leave all that out? Because it doesn't fit his narrative. You can't control people unless they're afraid. And that's the ticket. And that's been the Democrat progressive leftist mantra nationwide, statewide, in here in New York City. We have to divide people and we have to make them afraid and angry both. Bad combination. We can't control people unless we do that. And that's the reality. Of course, there's going to be negative police public interactions. There are millions of interactions a year. But you citing five or six bad incidents as a reason to get rid of plainclothes policing strikes me as ri ridiculous. A and, and then implying somehow that there's going to be, you know, riots if they bring back these plainclothes police officers. I don't understand how any of that helps. OK, I, I want to communicate with you, but I want to take the emotion out of it. I just want to speak logically. You want to speak logically and take the emotion out. No, the emotions that you give other people are anger and fear. Very strong emotions. You know exactly what you're doing. What I did was foreshadow and told you what would happen, what told America what would happen if these police go out and eventually kill someone. And that will happen. Now, on the other hand, if you want to throw out the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution for the sake of safety, then you do that. Me personally, I believe in the Constitution. Violence. I just Listen, want to get let me, you on let me the explain record something here. to you. Hawk. Let me explain no, no, something. I just to want you. to get you on the record. You don't want I'm, violence. I'm going or on the record right now. right now. I'm going on a, the record right now. Okay. As Dr. King said, riots are the voice of the unheard. 
It's a natural I, occurrence that I'm if just people will keep, continue question. to be Do you traumatized or not? and oppressed, they will lash out. That's it. Do you condemn That's violence they will or not? And, but and, they and, shouldn't and lash which, out, correct? Dan, what, what I'm telling you is, right, what I'm telling you is, the Boston Tea Party was a riot. It was because people were fed up. Is this guy insane? The Boston Tea Party. He's going to do that with billions of dollars worth of property damage around the country. Hundreds of millions in New York. Thousands of lives ruined. Dozens of people dead. To a bunch of people that put on some makeup and pretended to be Indians and dumped some tea leaves in the, in the Boston Harbor. Are you kidding me? Seriously? So they took and So you won't Christmas why can't Saturday. you just condemn violence? How does this Why help? would why why would I condemn violence? That's right. Why would you condemn violence? Cuz you can't control people unless they're angry and fearful. I'll give the guy credit for being what he is, but he's not a politician. He won't condone it, but he won't condemn it either. This is like a politician, Neil. Why, why would I do that? I believe in self-defense. I believe that if someone No one's talking you, about self-defense. All right, let me make it simple. Forget, okay. I, this, clear, this is clearly a little bit over the head here. Now, when you say a little bit over the head, that's a shot, like you're an idiot. Yeah, Dan probably shouldn't have said that. But you know what? He's so frustrated with this guy. He really is. <laughs> he used to be a, a cop in New York, and he, he worked for the Secret Service, for Pete's sake. So he knows what he's talking about. And he's dealt with people like this and their mentality for years. And he probably just got fed up. Do you condemn rioting head? and burning down Over buildings? Over whose head? You, you, you're not answering the question. Do you condemn riots and burning down buildings after a police use of force incident you don't like? No, I, I can. I, what I'll say is I understand when a police officer unjustifiably kills someone, why people lash out. I'm not going to condemn, you can't the nor question. am I going to condone it. Now, now, see, here's the thing. Isn't when that Osama cowardly? Bin yeah, that's right. It is cowardly. It's called being a politician. I won't condemn it and I won't condone it. You know what? I'm not going to say. Well, isn't when that Osama cowardly? bin Laden I'm not and those it, but terrorists I'm not it, attacked so I don't the take United States of America. Can you let you, me listen, talk? Man. You have a show. You no, talk no, as much you as you want. Talk a lot Can, of I talk? Junk and Can I talk? That's all he's been doing is talking. We should just do a little bit here, the part that I edited out. He talks 70, 75% of the time. Then when I put you on the spot, you won't answer a damn question. Do you condone violence? I'm answering violence? the question. Or do you condemn I'm violence? answering You're the question. You're all over the place. Well, Just I'm condemn answering the violence question. and burning of buildings down. How hard is this? I don't I condone I it. I don't promote it, but I will not condemn it. Yeah, that's just cowardly, man. That's just cowardly. No, you're you a coward. For something. You yeah. know what? Yeah. You see, I'm you're coward, trying to bait yeah. me. God I, bless you, yeah. man. I'm out of here. Nope. God bless. Yeah, yeah. You are out of here. You're right. I now, this is the next day with Leo Terrell. He is a civil rights attorney in Los Angeles. Very far lefty at one time. In fact, uh, discovered that these guys were just lying about everything and they're burning the country down. And nobody, the Democrats wouldn't stop him. He left the party and he started wearing a Make America Great Again hat. So I give Leo a lot of credit. So let's see what he has to say. It's a short clip. Thank you for having me, Rachel. I, I couldn't sleep all night over this subject. First of all, kudos to Dan Bongino. Good job. Mm. Who is Hank Newsom? He represents the Democratic Party. That's a Joe Biden voter. I want to be very clear. Black Lives Matter New York doesn't represent black people. It certainly doesn't represent me. And for this guy to go on a national TV program and refuse to condemn violence, are you? he's a shakedown artist, Rachel. These people... Exactly right. He's a con man, a shakedown artist. I give him credit. They see an opportunity to do very well for himself as far as status goes and notoriety. I wonder how much money's going in his pocket or the organization, like the National Black Lives Matter, got billions of donations, billions, because they tapped in to the good nature of the American people. The majority, by the way, were white and of all ages. Tapped in to fairness. And they took and ran with it. It's about power and control. It's unbelievable. 
I mean, who the hell are these people really representing is beyond me. Live on chaos and fear. His organization, if he's so powerful, run for office. I'm begging Eric Adams right now, implement this anti-gang unit because Hank Newsom has no power, no clout, and I find it insulting for an organized group. How many people are they to, to threaten the government that if you don't do what we want, we're going to burn you down? This is, this is a, a person who supports riots. It's offensive. He represent, He does not represent black people. I want to make sure this is clear. Be very curious to see how many people mm. is in this so-called Black Lives Matter organization, Rachel. It's very insulting. That's right. It is insulting. Incredibly insulting. But the Democrats, in order to gain power, in this case, New York City, New York State, individual states, California, and the nation, have allowed these people to become louder and more powerful than they rightfully deserve. Just like the progressive wing of the Democrat Party. They've taken over the party. You don't have to have a majority of the party to take it over. You just have to allow them to take it over without stopping them. And that's what happened. And now they're in the box and this whole thing is unraveling. And Democrats don't know what to do. My advice for the average non-white voter for the next five to ten years, do not, do not vote for a Democrat candidate for five or ten years and see what happens. Can't be any worse. Here's the weird part, though. This gentleman must be from Black Lives Matter. He must be really upset that young black men in Chicago and other major cities are stacking up their bodies like cordwood because they're killing each other. And yet you hear nothing, nothing. They don't give a good damn. This is about power and control. So hats off to Leo and hats off to Dan Bongino for calling him out. I'm surprised the Black Lives co-founder went on Fox, but that's just me. Maybe he's just, he's just hungry for more attention. Until the next time, folks, goodbye and good luck. Mm-hmm.